We praise the Lord for this evening. We praise him for his goodness, for allowing us to gather together this week for an important assembly where we can interface with the Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is kind. And we praise him for such moments that he affords us. And uh, I can sense uh, some uh, sanctified disappointment in you. And as I sense the uh, aura of uh, disappointment, may I hasten to say your disappointment will be short-lived. It uh, won't live very long. So this message is preparatory in nature. It's uh, uh, waiting for the ultimate moment, the deja vu moment that is soon to come. And uh, therefore, uh, allow your disappointment to dissipate because soon what we are waiting for will be here. I don't know when, I don't know how, but definitely it shall be. We praise the Lord for his goodness. And uh, we praise him for tonight. We praise him for allowing us to be here tonight. And before we begin our message for this evening, shall we bow our heads and pray. Lord and Father in heaven, we are finite. We know nothing. It's only you. It's only you who knows. Without you, we can do nothing. We invite you, dear Lord, to be with us. Guide us. Give us the power to utter the right words. Without you activating our minds, we can fumble, we can say wrong things, and we can cause confusion. We invite you to be with us. Sharpen our lips. Make us to say exactly that which needs to be said. At the end of it all, may people say, the Lord has been here. In your name we pray. Amen. As uh, this message is preparatory in nature, we will keep it preparatory. The discussion for this evening is uh, a preparation for great things that the Lord is going to do for us this week. And uh, as we prepare for such a great week, a week that Solusi has not yet seen, a week, a post-COVID experience that has never been seen since the world began, we begin this week with a message from uh, Exodus chapter uh, 3, verse 5. And uh, in Exodus, we encounter Moses. We can rush there together. I'm not sure if they are beaming on the wall. If not, you can rush to your Bibles. And uh, as we get to the book of uh, Exodus, we encounter the Lord with Moses. And uh, in theology, we call it a theophany. Uh, a theophany is an encounter with the Lord, a divine encounter where humanity encounters God. We don't have many of these in the Bible, but we have uh, this theophany where Moses has a face-to-face -face 
uh, encounter with the Lord. And uh, we will not look much at that, but we will rush to what will be our focal point this evening. Our focal point is in verse 5. As uh, you get to verse 5, Moses is admonished to put off his shoes. And uh, the Lord uh, enjoins Moses in uh, verse 5 that you are entering holy ground. Because you are entering holy ground, please put off your shoes. And uh, this will be our focal point this evening, the ritual of uh, divesting oneself of shoes. Put off your shoes. In my language, is a uh, sort of a little bit rigorous, a little bit rough, and uh, more so uh, it's uh, aggressive in my language, and I will be resorting it now and again. And uh, let me state it from the beginning, that uh, this is a slightly combative sermon, uh, and uh, it shall make us a little bit uh, uncomfortable. We will enter some of those uh, rough waves, you know, when you are flying. When you fly in a plane, the pilot tells you that uh, now we are entering turbulent zones, and uh, please put on your seat belts, and uh, may the uh, flight crew, please could you sit down, and uh, please may you put on your seat belt if you are afraid of uh, heights. We start from here. God enjoins Moses. He says, put off your shoes, remove your shoes. And uh, as he tells him to remove his shoes, God, the first thing that God is telling Moses is, here I am in charge. You are entering other people's zones. This is not your zone. This is divine space. It is the zone of other people. And uh, I want to tell you, as we enter this week, we are entering another person's zone, another person's time. It is God's time. And uh, we have to remove our shoes. We have to remove our shoes because it is God's time. And uh, what does a shoe represent? We will uh, look at that as we invite each other to divest ourselves of uh, these shoes. Number one, a shoe is a symbol of status and it is a symbol of power. Uh, when you go to Luke chapter 15, verse 22, when the prodigal son comes back to his father as he is restored to his former glory, he is given his shoes. He is uh, given shoes. The father gives him shoes to put on. And uh, you also remember in uh, Psalm chapter 8, verse 6, where God uh, invites his people and uh, he says, you have to put everything under your feet. And uh, as well, you remember in the book of uh, Joshua, after Joshua has conquered Israel has conquered chapter 10, verse 24. Uh, Israel uh, is invited to put on their feet a 
upon the defeated kings. A shoe is a symbol of status. It is a symbol of power. And we are invited this week to divest ourselves of power, to remove the power. Sorry, I'll be moving a little bit slowly. I am an African preacher. Uh, African preachers love moving around, but I am aware that there is a virtual audience as well. So I will reduce uh, my locomotivity, uh, but uh, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> the Lord is uh, inviting, he says, remove your power. This is a week when we need to divest ourselves of power, divest ourselves of our status. This is a week, uh, like many other weeks, but more so this week, as we enter this temple, as we enter these grounds, we have to divest ourselves of our aura of authority, our accolades of honor, this is divine space, this is God's zone. So all the titles that we have, have to disappear this week as we enter this space. There is no doctor, doctor ends at the door. As you enter here, you are entering as a sinner in need of grace. Your PhD ends right at the door. Here enters a sinner in need of God's power, a sinner in need of the grace of God. Your title of a professor this week, it ends at the door. You may be called prof out there in those buildings, but here it's sinners in need of grace. It's people who need God sitting at God's feet. Remove your shoe. Remove your shoe this week as you enter here. Remove your aura of authority this week, your power. There are people who have power, who, whose shoes are stepping on people's feet. They are stepping on people's feet, on people's necks here. We have people who seem to be conquerors, who are stepping on people's necks. And uh, we have people, not only at Solusi, I know I'm speaking to a virtual congress, uh, congregation, we have people who are stepping on others, whose shoes are stepping on other people's necks. Yes, we have George Floyds in the church, people stepping on their necks and uh, stepping so hard. Yes, we have people, not only at Solusi, but elsewhere around the world, who will not give you a good grade until you worship them and say, my father who art at Solusi, uh, hallowed be thy name. And uh, the Lord says, remove your shoe. Remove your shoe. And uh, we have uh, students as well who seem to have a lot of power who are symbols of authority as they walk, everybody wants to be like them. Why? Because of where they come from. They come from cities. They come from Harare. Uh, because they come from Harare, a big city. They come from Jobek, a big city. They come from Cape Town. As they enter Solusi, they are always surprised. What a dirty place, what a sorted place, what a drab place. Remove your shoe. This week, there is no Harare, there is no Jopek, there is no Cape Town. Here, there are sinners in need of grace. 
And uh, people at times compete. I've heard some, some of that noise, and I'm happy there's a virtual congregation. I've heard a little bit of that noise, uh, useless noise, but it's there. Who is better? Solusi or Hiltapek? Solusi or Rosangu? Solusi or Andrews? I want to tell you, neither is better. Jesus, uh, the woman says, uh, where should we worship? Mount Gerizim or Jerusalem? Which one is the place that you have pointed at? Jesus says, none of these. What God needs are people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. None. God is not at Solusi. He is not at Hiltapek. He is not at Rusangu. He is not at Andrews. He is among his people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Remove your shoes. Remove your arrogance. You learn one or two Greek words. You can't speak Greek. You can't. <laughs> that is a fact. You can't speak Greek. You just know one or two Greek words, and you have to refer to a concordance now and again. And now you come arrogantly with an aura of authority. I am an authority in Hebrew. I am an authority in Hebrew. You were not born in Cyprus. You were not born in Tel Aviv. You were born in Cholocho. You were born in Zagapia. You, uh, you were born in Kanikani. You were born wherever you were born. You are a stranger to Hebrew. You are a stranger to Greek. So all that arrogance, all that pride, remove your shoe. You have entered holy ground. Remove your shoe. Uh, remove your shoe. Remove your arrogance. Humble yourself before the Lord. Before God, you are nothing. Uh, remove your shoe. There are people who think they are, their intelligence is amazing. They think they are more intelligent than Jesus. They look at themselves as geniuses, uh, great thinkers, the plateaus of this world. Whether you are a plateau uh, here this week, we are not interested in your GPA. Whatever your GPA, your GPA is in that office, in the records office. Here, there are no GPAs. In this space, right in this church, there is no GPA. We don't care what your GPA is. It's important there. But here, what matters is remove your shoe. This week, remove your shoe. So as uh, the preacher shall be preaching, remove your shoe. Don't begin to mark what is the major objective of the text. What is the major objective of the sermon? Then you begin to mark his homiletical skills. You are not straight through with homiletics. You are still writing your mid-seam homiletics. <laughs> Even if you have done the entire homiletics, you are not yet done. You are not yet done. Listen to the Lord. You are not here to mark, to tell the preacher how to preach, to teach him. You are a patient. When you are a doctor, if you are a patient as a doctor, you don't tell a fellow doctor how to treat you. Please, you are in a coma. You are comatose right now. Allow yourself to be comatose. Allow others to treat you. Don't begin to lecture how you should be treated, how the preacher should preach. Don't give him instructions. Remove your shoe. Put off your shoe. This is a week to put off your shoe. This is a week for mourning. Number two, a shoe, uh, removing a shoe was a sign of mourning. 
uh, David, when you go to Ezekiel chapter 24, uh, you are actually David in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 15, verse 30, uh, David mourns for his son. And uh, as he mourns for his son, uh, actually his son is not yet dead, his son is yet to die, but uh, he has been uh, removed from his place by Absalom. And uh, because he is away, he is a fugitive. As a fugitive, he is mourning his condition. His son is still alive, and uh, as he is mourning, he removes his shoe. And also, when you go to the book of Ezekiel 24, verses 17 to 23, we, especially verse 17, God calls upon his servant uh, to mourn. And the mourning includes the removal of the shoes. This is a time, a time to mourn. This is a week when we need to mourn, to cry for solution. Say, Lord, please, the Holy Spirit must come down and Solusi must be saved. Lord, do something for us this week. Lord, we invite you, please be at Solusi. Come to Solusi. It's a time to mourn. Number three, because of my time, I'll quickly draw towards my end. And uh, we have uh, the removal of the shoe as a sign of uh, this possession. You go to Ruth chapter 4, verse 7. We encounter the Lord uh, and uh, his uh, servant Boaz. And uh, the people, as they are gathered, the men as they are gathered, the one who is entitled to have Ruth as uh, his wife, he says, no, I withhold, I withdraw my entitlement to this woman and uh, I remove my shoe. Uh, it's a sign that he has uh, relinquished his authority over the land and over that uh, woman. And uh, removal of a shoe, which is still the same thing, is one divesting himself of a territorial claim that this is not my territory. I give up this territory. You can go to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 36. We need to remove our shoes, to relinquish our right to authority, to relinquish our right to possession of a territory. Uh, there is a lot of territorialism, a lot of territorialism uh, in the church and among God's people. There are people who behave as though the Adventist church began in their mother's backyards, in their mother's kitchens, and uh, they tell other people and say, this is my church. Yes, you belong to this church, but you don't possess this church. It's not your church. You can't put it inside your pocket. There are people who are so arrogant, who are quick, to notice those who don't belong to them. Here, I think we have people who are new in the church. Their behavior, you can tell that these are new in the church. This is not the church that I know. This is not my church. Yes, for sure, we have to insist on standards that I don't contest. But there are people who have become obnoxious, whose presence is so annoying because they behave as though this is their sole territory. They have territorialized the church and uh, they are so arrogant, so possessive, and they are pushing everyone out of the divine space. It's me 
and my God. Me and my God. As though God only works with them. And uh, there are people who have canonized their own words. Yeah. God said. God said. No, it's not God. It's you who is speaking. Uh, but they want to canonize their words, to give their words some aura of authority by saying God said. No, God said in the Bible. This is the word of God. Anything else is your word. And uh, is it the word of God? Yes, it, it, it can be coming from God. But allow God to speak through the Bible. You are a sinner. Remove that shoe. Yes, you may be a prayer warrior. You may be praying three, four, five times a day. But you can never have monopoly on God. God created everyone. Sinners and the righteous, they are God's people. Don't monopolize him. So remove your shoe. And uh, let me get a little bit uncomfortable uh, here as I get into this space a little bit and I'll get out again. But we are entering the turbulent zone. Uh, please put on your seatbelt. Uh, you know, there is a tendency, I'm calling upon Solusi, that we remove our shoe. We always boast that we, Solusi, we are entitled to everything. We are the mother of Adventist missions in Africa. Yes, I love church history. I love it a lot, especially Solusi history. I have always been following it very, very carefully, meticulously, religiously. Uh, I have followed Solusi history. But uh, let's be careful. At times, we may have the temple of the Lord syndrome. The temple of the Lord syndrome, you find it in Jeremiah, where people say, this is the temple of the Lord, where we make Solusi uh, to become an emblem, and uh, an emblem of God's presence, and uh, we want to make Solusi not God. Uh, we want to divinize Solusi. We want to make Solusi God in itself. There is a tendency at times to say, this is the mother of Adventist missions in Africa. And uh, we behave as though we can do anything that we want. Because God is here. He pointed here. Because he pointed here, we can do anything and God will never leave Solusi because he pointed. Do you think Solusi is better than Jerusalem? God left Jerusalem. So if we don't call upon the Lord, if we don't mourn this week, it is possible God can leave Solusi. I love Solusi. Me, I love Solusi. If uh, there are uh, some people who are diehard Solusians, one of them is me. But I know God can live Solusi. Uh, he can live Solusi. So this uh, entitlement, this aura of entitlement, that it's Solusi or no way, it cannot be. God can live. And let me remind you, uh, Adventism, Adventists in Africa did not begin at Solus. They did not. Uh, we at times forget this in church history. There were black uh, Africans who were baptized before Jim Mayenza. Richard Moko was baptized in 1895. David Kalaka, Richard Moko was in South Africa. David Kalaka also from Lesotho, was baptized 1895 before Jim Mayenza. So this arrogance of we, Solusi, we, Solusi, remove 
your shoe solution. Let us remove our shoes. Who is the mother of missions? It's God in heaven, not solution. It's God in heaven. And uh, it's not about being the mother of missions. It is about missionizing today, going out to preach today, not what happened. Don't tell us about Stuttgart. That uh, no Stuttgart, his son is buried there at the graveyard. Tell us about what you are doing today. This is a week when the Lord is enjoining us to go and preach this week. And uh, remove your shoe. There are people who are here who think that if they leave Solusi, Solusi will die. If uh, we stop patronizing Solusi, Solusi will die. There are people who have that arrogance, lecturers and students, who think if we stop coming to Solusi, Solusi will die. We will not have any other Solusi. Once we stop, it will no longer be there. Stop and see. Sorry for being so uncomfortable. Please put on your seat belts. It's turbulent zone. But uh, I will say it. Because if God wants Solusi to live, if God wants Solusi to live, leave Solusi and see if it will die. Yeah. Uh, if uh, so and so, if me, I live, I am the only one with a PhD in what, 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 getting somebody for this area. If I leave, hey, my friend, they won't get another. You won't get another. Leave, let's see. Leave. Leave, let's see. And uh, we want to see if you will leave with the keys for Solusi, wherever you'll go. If you'll go with the keys for Solusi, remove your shoe. Remove your shoe. Yes. The people will think, me, if we stop, if we stop us, Solusi is going to die. Remove your shoe. We were here. 1994. Hundred years later, Solusi had been here 1894. I came here 1994. Others were complaining that this school will die. This one. Yeah. I heard my father tells me when he was here, they the, the, the uniform was written SMC, which meant Solusi Missionary College. And my father tells me he was here in the 1960s, 1950s and 1960s. He says, we used to say the SMC meant Solusi Mistaken College. And uh, he says, others would say, Satane Muroi Chaiye. But Solusi is still here. Satane Muroi Chaiye is still here. Solusi Mistaken College is still here. My father was here for high school. He is retired. Solusi is still here. I was here, 94. I am retiring because my hair is telling me that I am waning. But Solusi is here. You are here. Can God close it? Yes, he can. But not because of you. He can close it for his own reasons. So remove your shoe. Remove your shoe. And the messages shall be preached this week. There are people with territories who tell others not to get converted. Don't get converted. Yes, the speaker, the one who is coming, he has his way of preaching. At times, he gets combative, he gets, but you need to remove your shoe. Allow yourself to listen. Don't bring in what comes from outside whatever you may have heard 
whatever theology you may have gotten from elsewhere, remove your shoe. Come here with humility. Sit down and listen. Allow the Lord to speak to you. This evening, I invite you to remove your shoe. Remove your shoe. Remove your shoe.